Hey guys, Darren here again. Um, sorry, I probably ended that first one a little prematurely. I didn't see anything coming up, but I'm going to try it again here, see if we can see something up in the main windows. So I can uh, see your guys' chat. It's a little bit awkward here. I'm just using my phone, so I have to face it backwards so I can't actually see it. So just give me one second, and I'm going to try... Uh, bringing up a screen here. So if you can hear me, just maybe uh, post a hello. I think I found it here. All right. All right, I see the fly fiend here. Hey Jake, how's it going? All right guys, we're just gonna try and uh, maybe tie up a fly here, see how that goes and it's uh, Nothing specific. I just want to make sure, or I just want to uh, be able to chat with you guys once in a while. I uh, just have a fairly busy schedule, so I don't always get time to uh, do up the videos, but I do enjoy the uh, conversations that we have in the comments. So if you have any questions about the fly pattern or anything, go ahead and just... Uh, ask your question. I've got the comments up on screen, so I'll have a look at those as I'm tying. Sorry about the first video that got shut down prematurely there. So hopefully I can figure out how to do this properly and can have some smooth videos coming out. So Jake, have you been out fishing in the last little bit? It's uh, actually a pretty good day today. I was down by Duffins Creek earlier today and um, just kind of checking things out. And uh, quite a few steelhead guys with center pin rigs out by the rivers right now and uh, haven't had a chance to go out myself. Hey Colin, what's up? Thanks for dropping in so Jake you've been up in the Maitland this week that's uh, um, I haven't actually been out there that's west of the city I guess right little ways um, how'd you do out there Jake Alright, Mark. Hey, how's it going? Good to hear from you. Hyung Lee. Hey, what's up, guys? Thanks, everybody, for joining in. This is... Uh, might be a touch on the boring side, but... Uh, let's give it a shot and see what happens. <clears throat> Alright. So I just tied up a new rig here. I'm just gonna put that aside to dry. I usually do those all up ahead of time and then uh, tie the flies to order here. So I'm tying a uh, set of Hobo Hobe Spear customer. Um, we've got a few different colors to tie. So I'm gonna start off with uh, like an olive colored one here. Probably should have prepped my materials a little bit better for this, but it's a little bit tricky doing this stuff, I think. I don't know if I'll keep doing it. You guys can let me know how it goes if you like 
just walks in Mitai or you rather just have the uh, regular tutorials? Hey Tim, how's it going? Good to hear from you. Steve, he's our uh, latest winner for the draw. I uh, sent some flies out for you this week. Hopefully for Christmas. So has anybody been out fishing in the last week or so? So I haven't been out for quite a while, a couple months probably. Almost, it's been uh, fairly busy. So Colin, you got ice in the pond, do you usually fish? So do you do any ice fishing or anything of that nature? I used to ice fish quite a bit actually when I was living in Alberta, but um, I don't really enjoy it to be honest. I'm not uh, super pumped to be out in the cold weather. So when we did go ice fishing, we used to uh, just hit some of the trout ponds and I tend to use some of my midge patterns. Um, I'd still use flies a lot of the time for ice fishing as once I became a fly fisherman and uh, different chironomids do well for that. But to be honest, I don't like staring at a hole for Eight hours trying to catch trout it's uh, not the funnest thing right Steve you haven't been out since September uh, hopefully you can get out over the winter sometime if you got some open water Mark you haven't fished since soccer well, that's too bad what area are you guys from, if you don't mind letting me know? So I guess it's up a little bit north, northern U.S. and into Canada. It's a lot, a lot harder to get out fishing. Okay, Virginia, you guys just got some snow, I guess. Hey, young. So Mark, you're in California. Hyung, you're in uh, Virginia at the Rapidian River. Is that open all year? Okay, Steve's New York. Um, K Master Shiznit, I'm tying a uh, hobo spay. Uh, steelhead pattern here. Jake, you gotta get out fishing next season, uh, or maybe I'll try and make a trip out there, out your way perhaps. All right, so I'm just finding some marabou fly by the way I don't know if I told you guys but uh, the uh, super fly marabou that I usually use um, they decided to cut their production of fly tying materials at the end of this month so I 
think I'm going to have to stock up on this stuff because, in my opinion, it's the uh, best marabou out on the market. And unfortunately, I'm going to miss it once it's gone. I'm just going to use a tan feather for this. I really like the way that uh, the tan and the olive go together. Well, this is basically what we're tying here. I don't know if you can see it from behind. Young. Okay, so you can fish that river year round and uh, lots of brook trout in there. That sounds pretty nice, actually. We've got a lot of brook trout in the tributaries around here where I fish. Um, but there's also a lot of rainbow trout um, and I guess that they're uh, like steelhead stock for the most part but it's uh, some small resident rainbows is what I call them. You can catch a lot of those but up above on some of the uh, Ontario tributaries at a Lake Ontario you get uh, places where it's been dammed or whatever and um, up above those dams, you'll find some of the natural brookies and get into some of the brown trout in there as well if you find them. The thing I like about it is not a lot of people head up there. If there's uh, no big fish, tend to stay away from it for the most part. But it's kind of fun. It's nice to get a little bit of seclusion. Mark, your rivers are good. You're in California. Were you guys affected by all the forest fires and uh, mudslides and that sort of thing? We were just in California for family vacation earlier in the year. And uh, we were in the south of California. Um, I guess there were a few fires going on at that time, but we didn't really see a whole lot. Tim. Yeah, northern Minnesota, I guess that's uh, almost like the most Canadian spot in the U.S. almost, I guess. Is that true? Does that sound right? Um, I guess you guys are probably frozen up. You guys get some cold weather up there, same as in Manitoba. All right, Hyung in Richmond, James River runs through. All right, I got that. So you got smallies that run through during the spring. So that's kind of cool. You got a multi-species river. I used to live in Edmonton. We used to have a lot of different species of fish run through the uh, rivers different times of the year in the spring you'd get some of the uh, gold eye and moon eye and those were fun to chase kind of a something a little bit different get on the fly anyways and uh, then year round you had walleye in there and then white fish and I guess uh, some pike and all sorts of stuff. Lots of the uh, cold weather species anyways. And no bass. So Mark, oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, it's, uh, it, when I went to California, I put uh, 
weather alerts on my phone, so I haven't taken it, but I just set it for Anaheim, and I'm getting all these warnings all the time for uh, uh, fires, smoke, and uh, mudslides and that kind of thing. Well, I hope you weren't uh, affected. We were in uh, Anaheim and San Diego, so... Um, and even flying over, coming in, we didn't see too much, to be honest. But uh, I think it got a lot worse after we left California. We were there um, mid-July, mid to the end, mid to end of July. I hope uh, you're still able to get out and do some fishing. Ken St. Martin, thanks for dropping in. So you're getting ready for winter steelhead in Oregon. So that's, that's a steelhead of a whole different animal out there. So don't want to start a war here, but sometimes you hear people talking about how Great Lakes steelhead is kind of uh, the fake steelhead versus the west coast steelhead where you've got them running into the ocean and uh, i'd say there's there is a big difference in the fish that come out of both of those systems uh, the great lakes steelhead are pretty good um, but i would say they don't get quite as big as the uh, west coast ones and i've been fishing for steelhead out west for quite a while um, <clears throat> but uh, it's kind of nicer like when you're steelhead fishing here in Ontario it's uh, a lot of fishing through cities and uh, brown lining I guess whereas I find west coast you're a lot more out in nature and you're more likely to uh, run into bears and that sort of thing. We don't really have them here, which is kind of nice not to have to worry about them, to be honest. Although, we do get a few brown bears coming in, but um, nothing, nothing too often anyways. Charlie M. Let's see. Hey, Charlie. You're in Louisiana? That's cool. Um, I had a friend. He used. He grew up in Louisiana. Don Ordes, and uh, he's told me a few stories about him fly fishing. Uh, he was out fly fishing. I don't know what his target species was, but ended up catching uh, gators or crocs, whatever, whatever you got down there. And uh, but he was telling me. He'd take those in and uh, he'd make pickled alligator. So he said send up some. And uh, haven't seen it yet, but interested to try that out, see what it's like. So, Mark, you're in the central part of the state and uh, got really bad in your mountains there. Well, yeah, we were pretty much south, I guess, and uh, it's, uh, I'm glad to, uh, you're still up and at him. So, did you, were you guys affected by the, f the fires at all then? Like, how close were the fires to you, Mark? All right, we've got one fly done here. So this is my uh, olive and tan version. Yeah, speaking of redfish, there was a video on uh, Global Fly Fisher not too long ago and uh, showed some overhead, um, some guys fishing for redfish. It looked pretty cool. 
If you haven't uh, checked that out, you should have a look for it. It's uh, probably in the last week or so, I guess. I can't remember if it was a video on YouTube or if it was on Vimeo. If I can, I will link, put a link in the uh, community page for that. to zap that right there's my light yeah Charlie from what I've seen some of those uh, red fish they can get to a pretty good size I've never actually gone out fishing for them for myself but I think that's probably one thing I'll need to add to my bucket list One fly down, I've got another 11 to go for this order. Right. So I've got kind of 12 different uh, variations of the fly that I tie. Oh yeah, here's the one I was looking for earlier. This is one I tied for a client not too long ago. Actually, I guess I just tied that yesterday. I really like the way that these kind of bounce out. Nice. So Ken, you guys have some rivers near Portland? around the city as well as lots of variety. I've only been to Portland once and I didn't go there on purpose actually, but um, I really like the uh, television show Portlandia. Oh, this uh, here? Yeah. So basically, I don't know if you can see that, Um, that is, so that alligator clip, I just attached that to the spring clip. And, and I just did some time to hold materials in place once in a while. And it's just a hardware store thing and I can move it. But uh, so when I'm tying on these hooks, I want to make sure that I got that hook buried away. All right, where are we here? <clears throat> what about lyrics of Sabaton? I have no idea what you mean by that. All right. Um, so Tim, Lake Superior steelhead average about six pounds in the river. And uh, one day I'll make it out west. Yeah, uh, B quite a big difference between the uh, six pound steelhead out of the superior drainage. That'll be uh, quite a surprise for you, I think, to tie into West Coast steelhead. So I've seen some of those get um, almost as large as the salmon, like over 20 pounds, maybe 30 pounds, some of those, I guess. Um, let's see, Ken, okay, uh, Mark, so a hundred miles or less from us, yeah, uh, the air quality where you've got forest fires going, it's got to be just horrendous, uh, growing up in Alberta, just on the border, we used to run into that quite a bit, and there was no fires close to you, you know, like, Kind of within 100, 
200 kilometers or 100 miles, you'd still get the smoke if the wind was blowing in the right way. If you had any uh, breathing issues, you could be in some trouble, right? Yeah, uh, for that clip, it's uh, you have a vice that'll take it. Um, this mongoose, the material clip's got a little bit of a space in here where you can put a screw through it. Um, it uh, I don't use it too often, but if I'm tying uh, eggs or something and I want to kind of just keep a material handy, I just kind of do that. It's kind of nice nice to have or just being able to wrap it around just so that it doesn't drop when I'm doing some speed tying <clears throat> yeah so getting back to Portland I guess I it's probably 20 years ago that I was there basically sat in the airport tried some starbucks for the first time and uh I, I wasn't a fan of it at that time i think i got a picture of me giving a sour face for i think it was an iced coffee and uh i was kind of on the double double kick at that time so if you don't know what the double double is that's a canadian term for two cream two sugar in a coffee and uh, most likely it comes from Tim Hortons when you talking about the double double. But uh, I'm a fan of it now. I like strong coffee and don't mind the harshness of it. So I'm going to tie a, uh, let's see, a, well, let's do a chartreuse and blue version here. Just have to find a good feather. Okay, so Steve, you have the same vise. That's cool. Um, I've got two of these actually, and I've got quite a few. I've had quite a few vices. I've got my main vice. This one here is a, a Montana mongoose, a griffin. And the one that I tie on, my old vice, is one of the first models of the Montana Mongoose that came out. And I've probably had that one for 15 years. And it's still pretty good. I, uh, the reason I can one, aside from having two vices set up all the time, is just to have um, the new black finish. So you, you probably noticed the one that I tie on for the videos is uh, a silver or a, like a metallic gray color. It's one of the older ones. And uh, this one's got the black finish. You can kind of see the uh, <clears throat> colors kind of wearing off those jaws. So it gets quite a bit of use. But I do like this one. It's Probably the favorite, my favorite vice in terms of um, tying trout flies. Just because I tend to have to flip the uh, vice over quite a bit. And the size is pretty good. And I like that you can kind of bury uh, materials in the clip back here. I like that position. So other vices I've had. Um, first one I had was Thompson Model A, and that was okay for a starter vise. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend it. The problem that I ran into it, into with it was uh, the jaws bent out on mine, so I was probably trying to tie with some bigger hooks, I guess, and uh, it, it was okay. It was a good vise to start on. It was... Uh, inexpensive so talking about that second vice I had was a, a, 
call it a crown vice, and I don't know if that's the right term, but it's basically one of the Regal Vice clones. I think I paid about 65 bucks for that, and that would have been uh, 15, 20 years ago, maybe. Can't remember exactly. It's been a while. And uh, it was a pretty good vice. Uh, the only thing I don't really like about the Regals is just uh, if you want, like I like to tie with the jaws like this. But if you want a rotary vice, you need to set the jaws flat. And I don't, you don't have enough height, I find. It's a little bulky for my taste, but I do have a Regal now, uh, but I don't use it too often. I use it uh, once in a while if I have to tie on the road or if I'm having to watch the kids and tie some flies. Uh, I'll take it downstairs and tie there. But uh, the mongoose, I'd say, is by far kind of meets my needs. Um, I've had, let's see, I've had an HMH, had a pedestal pro, perhaps. I can't remember exactly what it was called. It was a pretty good vice, but I didn't really like the way that it held hooks. I had interchangeable jaws so it had a set of magnum jaws and a set of midge jaws which did a pretty good job but the mid ones I had I just found uh, Smith's on it to be finicky and I couldn't really tighten it up as well as I wanted to well I bought mine second hand so it might not have been great to begin with I don't know um, but it's still Advice and I had, I think I'd used it for a couple shows in the past and it did all right. Okay, let's see, I need some blue. But uh, the one thing I like about this mongoose is once you have it set up the way you like it, you don't have to uh, make any adjustments. To it. I haven't had to at least. But uh, speaking of vices, you can see uh, every everybody's kind of got their favorites. So, I mean, um, I do like this one quite a bit. I don't think I'd want to trade it in. And I have tried other ones since I've got this just to kind of see if I was missing out on any benefit. The only one I might trade this for would be a Law of Ice. And that's the one that uh, Davey McPhail ties on. Now, unfortunately, that vice costs about um, upwards of $1,000. And they're not made anymore. <laughs> so, anyways, that kind of settles that for me right away actually <clears throat> there's one other vice i wouldn't mind giving a try and there's uh, a guy in ottawa um farouk ekic he makes a uh, bobbin as well he's got one of his bobbins here so he has a company called fly tying enhancements he created this uh, bobbin holder and it's got a um, a clutch in it I guess and I used that for a while kind of in that one I'll have to order a new one but he makes a vise with uh, some Damascus steel and it's really beautiful piece those ones, I think he's got a back order for those. Well, I don't know if he's making them anymore or what, but really beautiful vice. If I had had an opportunity to get my hands on one of those, I might consider that. 
Um, so let's see. Charlie M, you have a stone throw vice. Oh, so yeah, the law vice, I think they were around 1500 but um, since they don't make them anymore, I think the price is likely going up. And that's if you can find one for sale. Like, I don't think a lot of people are parting with theirs. Uh, there was a company that came out with basically a clone of the Law of Ice. There was, again, on Global Fly Fisher, there was an article about them. And I think those ones were selling 1500 or so. And I'm not really sure how I feel about that because basically the design was almost a piece for piece copy original law vice and uh, the name of the company escapes me but um, I know there were there was a little bit of controversy around that anyways and uh So I don't know if it's one. I'm sure it was, the vice was good, but I don't know if I'd want to uh, support that kind of copying. Probably not, is my guess. So yeah, Charlie, your stone fro, which uh, model do you have? I haven't looked into those too much but I, I did see uh, Tim Camisa he was reviewing them a couple different models not that long ago and I uh, was kind of wondering how those would be to tie on Yeah, Steve, I was going to mention that as well, the uh, new HMH TRV. It's a uh, true vice. Looks like a nice design. I think my only hesitation with that vice is uh, there's one, one uh, connection. It looks to be um, at the bottom of the the V it looks like it might be a bit of a weak spot but I'm not too sure um, because I have had like I said with my other HMH um, it did have a little bit of problem with the adjustment I couldn't uh, tighten it enough but I have seen a couple reviews for that recently I think there was one on fly tying form um i was kind of looking around for a few things that's that vice is on the expensive side as well i think those ones go for uh around 600 or so us so it's a a bit of an investment but i wouldn't mind trying one so next time i'm at a fly show in New Jersey. Hopefully there's one there I can take a look at. So curious. Um, any of you guys go to any of the fly tying shows or outdoor shows to check out fly tying or fly fishing during this time of the year? Yeah, Steve, the cost is quite a bit, but I mean, if it's a good product, you're probably going to have it for quite a few years, right? Um, Cody, you go into the Edison New Jersey show? Uh, probably not. It's, uh, I don't really go to too many shows. But I'm just kind of curious as to which shows people do attend on a regular basis. I'd like to be out 
doing a few shows every year, but it's uh, a little bit for me to get away sometimes, and uh, travel is usually a bit of an issue, just everywhere seems to be uh, quite a few hours of driving or um, and flying is usually too expensive, right? So I have gone down to New Jersey when they had it in uh, Somerset. I've gone to that one three or four times, I guess. Oh, I was just going to let you know, Steve, the cost of this vice, the mongoose, I think, it's around 200 give or take. Um, so I think for what you get, it's pretty reasonably priced. And it comes with a C-clamp, a bobbin rest, and a pedestal. So if you're tying um, at shows, you can make it portable fairly easily. Uh, I was tying for a group of fly anglers down in St. Catharines, Ontario, a few weeks ago. And uh, which vice did I take? I took um, the one that I usually tie for production. So my production vice, I guess I took. Actually, I don't need chartreuse thread on this one. Yeah, Cody, the uh, Edison show. Did you end up going to that one? I was uh, curious on how the location was. Uh, I might try and get out there next year, depending on how things go. I tied at the uh, New Jersey show probably got to be at least five years ago, I guess, when I was doing the uh, Streamers 365 project. Uh, but it's been a, quite a while since that's wrapped up. Uh, that was that ran in 2012, and I did another run in 2013, 2014 on smaller scales, but it was fun. Um... I enjoy the show there. I like, I'd rather uh, be a participant, getting around, getting to uh, walk around and uh, talk to everybody. It was pretty nice. And, you know, there's different people there every year. And uh, it's actually quite a few people I had never uh, heard of before. So it's kind of nice to not only put some faces to names, but also get to meet some new people. And if you have the time to go chat up everybody, you could easily spend a couple days there. So if you are going to go, I think it's worth the trip if you're hardcore fly tire. So more open floor plan, that's good. I didn't mind the old one so much. Um... Uh, one thing I, I would have liked to see are more vendors that are selling stuff. Like, there was a few, but I'd like to see some of the companies uh, representing their uh, fly tying products, to be honest. There wasn't a whole lot of that when I was out there. There was a couple fly shops. Uh, Feathers MC was there. Um, there was a couple shops. I can't remember which ones were there, but be nice to see a little bit more of that kind of stuff at the show and of course all the fly tires it's nice to see uh, a nice tires out there and I know there's quite a few shows around uh, Pennsylvania Michigan that sort of thing um, just talking with Don Bastion he tends quite a few of those so be nice to get out to see a few of those once in a while here in Ontario we don't really have too much for 
uh, fly tying and fly fishing shows per se. There used to be an Isaac Walton show here in Ontario. And um, the club that ran that, I think they incorporated into the O, which is broader base. So you've got conventional gear fishing, lots of guides, um, lodges, boat manufacturers, that sort of stuff. So the fly tying and the fly fishing just becomes a really small component of that. And went and saw that the first year they had it and uh, didn't really enjoy that a whole lot. Kind of takes the uh, fly fishing aspect out of it, which is too bad. So you guys have one sponsored by TU in Syracuse. I guess that's not too far from me, Steve. I think we, you and I were talking about that, that you're not that far from the Salmon River and the Sandy River and some of that uh, fall salmon steelhead fishing that goes out the Salmon River. That's good. I uh, This year I joined the uh, internet or fly fishers international and um, i guess they don't have any local chapters here and fly fishing here is uh, a bit of a bummer unfortunately i mean, do find a few people that fly fish in my area but not as many as you hope but there, there's a lot of fishermen, not a lot of fly fishermen. Cody, you're in Maryland. Well, I don't know too much about Maryland. What kind of fishing do you guys do out there? Are you guys coastal? Are you inland? The only thing I know about Maryland really is when I lived in Prince Edward Island on the East Coast, we used to get a lot of uh, tourists coming up from Maryland. And I guess uh, in PEI, they, it's a nice place to summer. So is anybody planning any fishing trips for the new year? What are your plans or what are your fly fishing goals for 2019? So Cody, you got some good options at your hands, I guess, then if you've got access to both salt water and fresh water. So I guess you can go catch stripers and bluefish, that sort of thing. Hey Stuart, how's it going? Your goal is to catch a steelhead. Well, that's a good goal to have. Are you on the West Coast, Stuart? So Cody, what's your preference? Do you like uh, fresh water or do you like salt water? I've only been out salt water fishing maybe twice. 
Okay, Stuart, you're on Vancouver Island. Awesome. So if you're on Vancouver Island, that uh, gives you a lot of options for catching steelhead salmon. I haven't uh, had an opportunity to fish out in, in uh, Vancouver Island, but uh, um, I do have a couple contacts out there that have invited me in the past and just haven't taken them up on it. Steve, smallmouth bass on a fly. It sounds like fun. Um, we do have smallmouth here, and I've caught a few on the fly, but kind of, uh, I don't know if I've exactly targeted them, but uh, tie plows or minnow, or I've got a few different bass patterns. The uh, bass crawler is really good for bass, I found. Yeah, striped bass would be a lot of fun on a fly rod, I think. So you guys have smallmouth. Do you guys have uh, a lot of tournament fishing then for, for bass out in Maryland? Yeah, we've got quite a few tournament fishers here as well in Ontario for bass. And uh, it's pretty popular on some of the lakes. I don't know that it's for me. I like, for me, like, I like the solitude, uh, being out on the water with one or two other people. Usually by myself, I guess, for the most part. But I don't mind running into a few people while I'm out fishing just to stop and chat and uh, give away a fly or two usually. I remember when I first started fly fishing, probably a bit of a hard time. I was out at a lake on my own and there was a an older guy there fishing. And uh, he was having... A decent amount of luck. And he must have felt me looking at him because he came over after about a half an hour and slipped me a couple flies and said, try these. And uh, so I tied them on, tied one of them on and threw it out. And within about minutes, I guess, I had trout on. Up being like a gold ribbed hare's ear. Um, but that uh, show of generosity it kind of got me to always carry some extra flies so another good reason to tie your own you don't mind giving a few away I guess so whenever I see somebody if I chat with them on the river for a couple minutes I'll usually give them a fly and wish them well hey David from the UK you guys got a pretty hectic day over there today with your uh, Brexit news. Hope you guys can get all that sorted out soon. All right, the Elite Series. Cody, I'm assuming that's the uh, the league, I guess, of fishermen. So, you know, I've got uh, a couple friends out here. They've been kayak fishing. Um, and I tied 
some bass flies for a guy last year or the year before for a tournament, for a bass tournament, and I think they were doing strictly kayak fishing as well. He ended up placing fairly well. I think there was 42 or 32 in the field, and he ended up six with the flies I tied for him. So I guess we'll have to work on that, boost him up to first place. All right, guys, I think uh, I'm going to sign off here, but I'd just like to say thanks to everybody. Um, if you like this kind of format, just kind of chatting, let me know. Uh, make sure you give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And like it and hit the thumbs down. Make sure you do it twice. And um, you know what? Uh, if it's something that we like, maybe I'll try and do this once a week just to uh, shoot the breeze with everybody. Thanks, everybody, for joining in. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.